Hello, hello, everyone. Good afternoon on this Monday. Amanda Grace here with you. Hello to everybody that are jumping on right now in the United States and around the world. Hello to our moderators and Ark of Grace team. Thank you for helping us do what we do for the Lord. Andrew Sorcini is here. I'm going to bring him in in just a couple of minutes. Um, something pretty incredible happened. Gold hit an all-time high, and we're going to talk about this and talk about what it means for 2024 as well. So get your questions ready. I'm going to open up in prayer. Also, if you want to uh, like and subscribe um, on our channels, we have YouTube, we have Rumble also. Uh, we are on Facebook, and you could go to arcofgrace.org to see every other uh, platform that we have that you can subscribe to. So welcome. I see people jumping on from Ohio. Um, I see people in Alaska coming on. So God bless you over there in Alaska, people from Pennsylvania. So let's get started. I'm going to open up in prayer. And then I'm going to bring Andrew on. We have props today to show you. So this is going to be fun. We have some props today. Okay. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we come before you. We praise you. You are almighty God. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality, and might. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise due your precious, holy, perfect name. Father, we humble ourselves before you this day, asking that the pull of the flesh becomes less in our lives, so you, your will, your power become more in our lives. Father, we acknowledge you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to the earth. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was the Passover lamb, the sacrifice for our sins. He died at Calvary. He purchased us by the shedding of his blood. He rose again in three days, ascended back into heaven, took his victorious rightful place at the right hand of the Father, where he is our advocate before your throne. And we honor that before you this day. Lord, we invite your presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, Father God, to fill this place, to lead and guide us in all wisdom, counsel, might, power, and the reverential fear of the Lord, to teach us, Father, God, to teach us to be good stewards, Father God, to give us deeper understanding, Father God, in what you want for us and what you want us to do, Lord, with what you have given us, Father God. Lord, we just ask you take all the glory for yourself. You are the potter. We are most certainly just the clay. You are the author and finisher of our faith, Father God. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality, and might. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, and the first and the last, Father God. And we give you all the glory today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Okay, amen. Hello to those jumping on. We're going to bring Andrew in now. I think Andrew may have some props too. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it um well I'll tell you, I'm I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me back. It's a it's an exciting time to be in the metals business for sure. So something very historic has recently just occurred. Oh yes. Um gold yesterday evening hit two thousand one hundred forty nine dollars an ounce, which broke the all time high of two thousand seventy five dollars for an ounce. And it was only brief. So we've since seen a hundred and twenty to uh, $120 an ounce reversal to mm -hmm. the downside. So if you if you missed it, if you haven't already jumped in, right now is a good chance because uh, gold's still at over 2,000 an ounce. It's 2,029 and uh, it's go likely going a lot higher. So why do you think that happened, that gold hit an all-time high? What are the factors that contributed to this happening? Well, I think that the biggest one that I can think of is is israel what's happening there yes it's like yes. such a such a big event in the world where that mm -hmm. um, and people are really feeling scared and they want to have some sort of insurance policy on everything that they've worked for i think the second thing is uh i would tie ukraine into the first thing actually and then the second thing i would say is um is that the central banks have been getting as much gold as they can for the last couple of years specifically russia and china after um after the United States went after all of uh, the Russian assets here. Yes. In the banks, they said, that's fine. You can. So it's uh, also the idea of a gold backed central bank digital currency. If, if that's going to be backed by something real like gold, then that's going to create a demand that is like nothing that we've ever seen before. So let me ask you also, what does this mean now going into 2024? Because we're heading into an election year, right? Gold yep. has just hit, even if it was brief, an all-time high. So what, what does this look like going into 2024? 
I think that uh, it's going to be more of the same. I would bet you anything that gold is going to hit an all-time high again, possibly before the end of this year, but I think it'll blow through it next year. And, um, and I don't want to leave silver out because what's good for gold is great for silver. Silver has uh, as much room to run as gold does. In fact, silver can mm -hmm. double, triple in price easier than gold can. So if you've uh, invested in a lot of silver, either through us or elsewhere, then definitely hang on to that because the silver is more speculative. It, it does help as a hedge against inflation, just like gold does. But it's something that if you hold it a minimum two to five years, that there can be great gains obtained in owning physical silver. And I think you have some right there. I do have some. So these are the these are like the silver quarters. I'll put them up. So this exactly. is what they look like when you get them. Yes, um, those are um, Franklin silver halves, and mm -hmm. and I know you have you some have silver his quarters on well. here. See, there's his face yeah. right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And those are those are made of ninety percent silver. But okay. the one thing I should let people know is that when you think that you're getting ninety percent of something that doesn't sound good because it, it makes you think that you're not getting all of something, but it's a little bit misleading. So what the 90% silver means mm -hmm. in regards to that coin is that 90% of all the metal that makes up that coin is silver. The other 10% is copper. Okay. But when the value of that coin is calculated, it's only calculated based on the silver portion of what's in there. So, so um, 90% silver isn't bad. That used to be referred to as junk silver. Yeah. Because back in the late 60s, people would say, well, you know, they quit putting silver in the coins in 1964. These have silver. One day it's going to be worth money. And they throw it in a bucket and they just called it junk silver. But now those are worth a lot of money. So it's uh, worth hanging on to. That's what we might barter with if the dollar mm -hmm. were to go kaput. Yes. And, and those go up and down along with the price of silver, just like any other silver does. Yeah, and they're a little bigger than our quarters are now. So as you can see, that's bigger than, you know, our quarters would be down. I think this is a half dollar. Am I, are yes. we correct on this? So this yes. is a half dollar, so that's why. Uh, and so basically they are, they look a little more beat up, but that doesn't matter because yeah. they still have, you know, 90% worth of silver in it. Yeah, and that's exactly right. I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of yeah. the times when um, when people purchase those from us, they receive them, they open them up, and they're not they're not thrilled by the look of them because maybe on TV or elsewhere they've seen like ten ounce or hundred ounce silver bars with yeah. a beautiful finish to them, and and they um they go wow you know those are beautiful but the ninety percent silver is not but it doesn't matter it doesn't need to be beautiful that's what used to circulate as currency is the non reportable type. The bars yeah. are the reportable types. So yes. when you go to sell them, it'll generate a 1099 whether you want one or not. Yeah. So better to get the non-reportable stuff. And we, gold, uh, if you want, I'll show quickly. This is one ounce of gold mm -hmm. right here. So yep. it's in a clear case, but this is one ounce right here of gold. Yeah. it's um, And I would get as much gold as you can at this point because mm -hmm. um, I do think there's going to be a big run on it because um, if the central banks really are of accumulating as much gold as what they say. And I think it could be more. Yeah. And if, if we're headed toward a gold backed uh, central bank digital currency, that's going to create a big run on gold. It's going to create such high demand and a shortage that I wouldn't be surprised if gold went from where it's at now to like $3,000 an ounce. And, and um, I wouldn't want people out there to invest into gold because I said it could go to 3000 an ounce. Definitely do your research. If you look around on Google and say, how high, how high could gold go in the next couple of years? You'll see many different articles yeah. that, that are backed up by, by uh, facts that you can check out from legitimate uh, news sources. And you can see it has great potential, which means silver also has great potential. I also think gold hitting an all-time high right now going into the election year, I think is somewhat prophetic in itself, given oh, yes. what we see happening yeah. in the political arena. So I think there's some prophetic significance also uh, to that as well. Just throwing that in there. Oh, yes. And, and for the people that are out there watching, they should know that, uh, that gold and silver have not been able to realize their true values. And what I mean by that is that, um, is that the big banks, um, specifically like JP Morgan Chase, what they'll do is they've 
accumulated um, a lot of physical silver and a lot of physical gold that they keep as a hedge against their portfolio as well. Yes. And while they're invested in physical gold and silver, at the same time, they're shorting paper gold and silver. So, so in, in one way, they're betting that gold and silver will go up. And on the other end, they're betting that it will go down. And their, their plan is to keep it as close to where it is at, all, at any given time. They don't want to see it fluctuate too much. Silver okay. does no matter what, but gold yeah. doesn't do it quite as much. And that's what they want. So yesterday when gold hit 2,149 an ounce, and then today it's 2,029 an ounce, and it's not even been 24 hours yet, that's probably the banks doing something. And I searched everywhere. I couldn't find it. But uh, the banks somewhere are are shorting gold to be able to get it right back where it is. Because if they allowed gold to realize its true value, then you would you would sell all the different other assets you have, like Bitcoin, stocks, yeah. maybe some extra real, real estate. The banks are already hurting. Five big banks have failed this year, and uh, it could probably cause a run on the banks or or people mm -hmm. just um, switching around their investments and the banks don't want that. So one day they won't be able to control it how they do now and, uh, yeah. and we'll be all better for it. I think Bitcoin's too volatile too. I just think that is, that, you know what I mean? That yep. is real gambling, honestly, doing something exactly. like that. You know, it's much better to have assets, I believe, than to take your money and do something like that. It's because true. you can lose it in a moment. You can lose what you've been given to Stuart in a moment doing that. Well, I'm going to talk for a minute because Andrew's internet connection has been slightly spotty. Here he goes. We're back. Okay, he's back. Yep. So I'm going to be um, going overseas again here in a couple of weeks. And, um, and I need to make some large purchases while I'm there. So... Um, it's difficult to do these transactions. And I decided that I was going to buy a little bit of Bitcoin, just like one Bitcoin here, one Bitcoin there, so that I could have the funds available so that I could transfer and pay for whatever I'm getting with yeah. Bitcoin. So um, last week I bought like um, like three Bitcoin and they're, I'm up like eight, $9,000 on that. And I'm not trying to make any money on it. Yeah. In fact, I want it to stay the same because I'm trying to use it for cash. I can't take the, enough gold to make the purchases I want to make to be able to exchange exactly. it over there because leaving the country with a lot of gold is going to probably create a problem for me. So yes. it's like it, it might in customs. Yes. 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 So um, Bitcoin is very volatile so when, it, when it goes up and you make a few bucks, it feels good. But really, if you're using funds that you thought that you would need for retirement and you're buying Bitcoin and it can have a 10 or 20 percent swing in either direction, it's just too risky. I, I, I think, it, yes, I, I agree with that. Uh, and I agree it's always good to um, diversify and have physical assets also. If, if, you know, if you are looking for ways to take what you have been given to Stuart and invest it. So uh, silver and gold is definitely something you can do that with. I'm looking for questions. So everybody that wants to ask questions to Andrew while he's here, because he loves to answer your questions. Please put them in the chat now. Because I'm looking through as we're talking. And um, I will put them up as soon as they come up. Here we go. Here's a good question, Andrew. Can we purchase more metals and add to our current precious metal IRA with equity trust? Oh, yes. I, I've spoken with Kathleen before. Hi, and thank you for all of your support. Hi, yes, Kathleen. You yeah. So what happens is, is sometimes um, uh, like every year you can, um, depending on what type of IRA you have, you can add, I believe, up to about six thousand dollars and keep contributing to it. Well, when people do that, you don't have to send it back to your original IRA company. You can you can send that over to Equity Trust and you'll be able to use that to invest in more gold or silver. And also, um, I know that Kathleen set up her IRA a while ago, maybe a year or two ago. And um, it might be time for us to look at it and see if we need to shuffle anything around. Like maybe we might have gone heavy on silver and yeah. we need to get her some more gold or vice versa. So we, that's something that we can do every now and then as well. Uh, Zali O'Day is asking, how can we get this in Australia? How can they get it in Australia, Andrew? It, um, 
you know, if, if you send a, if you go on to bh-pm.com and fill mm -hmm. out the online form and say, Hey, I'm in Australia. Do you know of someone that uh, is reputable that can help us out here? I will find somebody for you. Um, usually I'll text you right back, but it's, um, unfortunately we can't ship over um, across the borders, not even to Canada. So for people that might be listening that are in Canada right now, um, there are things that we can do. You can set up a storage account with the depository that we use here in the United States. Okay. And um, you can contribute uh, um, whatever funds. You can make a purchase from us. We'll ship it to the depository. It's physical metals that belong to you. And in theory, they could probably ship them from the depository to you, but we can't ship them from our office to you. So that's the way around for people outside of the country in regards to Canada, but everyone else, we're not able to help. Okay, so Anne Goodwin is asking, what are the best choice options in gold or is all gold reportable? Um, all gold is not reportable. So the best options are back in, in, in the 30s, they, the United States quit, uh, quit making gold coins. They were replaced yes. by a gold-backed dollar. And um, mm -hmm. so we call it pre-1933 gold. There's $20 gold pieces that have yeah. an ounce of gold in them, $10 have a half ounce, $5, have a quarter. And um, and we even have uh, some foreign gold that is non-reportable, like the Swiss 20 franc, which is about the size of a nickel, and it's about one-fifth of an ounce of gold. These are mm -hmm. great non-reportable items. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about that, definitely reach out to us on our website and say that uh, um, you heard, heard us on Ark of Grace, and we'll be happy to help you, and as we have so many other people. Okay. Katie is asking, is our money safe in the banks, cash or CDs? It, um, for me, um, I think that the CDs are okay. Um, I would uh, get as much of it out of the bank as you can. Um, for me personally, I've become very, very concerned about it because it doesn't matter how much money that somebody has, whatever you have in the bank is what you feel that you need to protect. And, and to you, it's, it's everything that you've worked for. So, I think that you do need cash still to transact with. So mm -hmm. keep enough, enough in there to do that. Maybe even keep some cash at your home if you feel like you have a safe place to do it and you're not putting yourself at risk. But you should still have some cash, but I would uh, get the bulk of it out of there. I'm talking to people that have um, bought properties like second yeah. and third, fourth properties to get large amounts of dollars out of the banks. And, and I've seen people do seven figure um, gold deals on a regular basis today. Someone did one for 1.4 million and um, it's a great move. It really is, especially because the next year is going to be very uncertain. We don't know who mm -hmm. our president's going to be, who our president is, might, might have a final say in the outcome of the conflicts in Israel and Ukraine or True. like the whole world. Yeah, I agree with that, Andrew. Okay, so Rhonda DeWitt is asking, is 999 or 0 .999 find silver good? It's, it's better than not having any silver, but that's the mm -hmm. reportable type of silver. silver. Yes. When, when the silver says that it's, when whatever silver product you have says exactly how much silver is in it, right yes. on it, then that by definition is bullion. Yes. And uh, yeah. bullion's not terrible. It's just, um, that's the type that if you were to go say to your, your local coin shop in your neighborhood and just even sell just one 10 ounce bar, they're going to collect all of your information, fill out your first name, last name, yep. um, it's reported, address, yeah, it's reportable. thumbprint, everything. So um, mm -hmm. if you have the 90% silver, you just go in there and they they take what you have. It's usually in a bucket or a bag. And yes. they, mm -hmm. yeah, they pour it into this like um, hopper. It makes a really yeah. loud noise, counts everything up. And they say, here's how much you have here, how much we pay. They still have you fill out a form with most of your information in it, but you don't get a 1099 the next year. It doesn't generate. Yeah, 1099. Shell Bell is asking, so you're recommending the 10,000 I have in stash cash to buy gold with it? Um, for Shell, I would only if you, you feel that you're not going to have to sell it back anytime soon. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to go That's through the, um, the, the hassle of having to send back like one coin or... Um, we, we had somebody a couple of years ago that bought 994000 of the $20 or $994,000 worth of the $20 gold mm -hmm. pieces. And um, about every month, he'll sell us back like four of them. 
And I would say that it's worth it for that, but it wouldn't be worth it to send us back like one coin here, one coin there. It, yeah. it would have to be something that um, that is part of your emergency fund, but you really don't think you'll have to get into it. Okay. Um, Teriyaki Yaki is asking, what is best if I only have a couple hundred to invest? So what do you suggest, Andrew? Okay. So for that one, it, it's, it's below what our minimum is, which is $2,000. Yes. But you should take what you can and go into one of the local coin shops and um, and just say, um, I'd like to buy some 90% silver. And they'll say, okay, great. How much are you looking to do? And say, I only have $200. Can you sell me $200 worth? And they will say yes, they will do it. And, and you'll find that when you get unexpected checks or, or if you, if you um, don't go full budget on something that you're doing, you might have a few extra bucks. You can just do that regularly and just accumulate the most that you can. It can't hurt. And anytime you need to, you can just sell it back and turn it right back into green dollars if you need to. Exactly. So Andrew was just touching on this, but we'll touch on it again. From Rumble, Silent Patriot One, what is the least amount of silver can I buy from you? It would be um, $2,000. And the reason is that um, most we're doing so many transactions here. Most of what we do isn't actually shipped from here. And uh, we actually use a different location to ship everything from. It's a third-party shipping service. Mm -hmm. And uh, they won't do any of them that are under the 2000 Okay, Nini Cruz is asking, would it make sense to take a withdrawal from my annuity to buy gold? I'm retired and don't have the income to buy gold or silver outright. Is If the annuity is, is your sole retirement, and if there's no other retirement, I might just say keep it in there. But mm -hmm. if you have a lot of different investments, and let's say that your home is paid for, your cars are paid for, and, uh, and let's say you have an IRA or a 401k that you're able to draw a distribution of, out of every single year, then I would say at that point, liquidate the annuity. But I don't want people to um, to invest in gold and silver with, with um, the only disposable income that they have. Because what will happen is you're going to find yourself uh, in a situation where you have to sell some back. And if you almost always sell back in the short term, you'll probably sell back for less than what you paid. Unless you bought gold a couple of weeks ago, then you'd be okay. But most of the time, it um, silver can have big swings. You know, silver was twenty-one dollars an ounce about a month ago, and yesterday it hit almost twenty-six an ounce. Mm -hmm. So if you if you bought a month ago and wanted to sell back, you'd, you'd be doing okay. But it can easily work the other way, and that would hurt if it's all that you're working with. Okay, Maria is asking, how do you transfer RRSP into silver in Canada? Um, there are companies that do what we do here in mm -hmm. Canada where you would be able to do that for sure. It's, um, I, I was just there. And um, an interesting thing about when, when I was in Canada, okay, I was there uh, two weekends ago and I just um, turned on the television. I'm just flipping through the channels. And I saw, I saw a commercial for their version of the FDIC. And it was just a commercial only for that. And, and it was two people that were um, doing something inside their home. And one person said, you know, I just found out that the uh, Canadian accounts are insured for up to $100,000 in account, and you don't need to be afraid of the banks. And it was only a commercial for that. I'd never seen anything like that. I think it's called like the CDIC. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's it lets you know that other countries aren't um, censoring that type of information. Here we want you to see okay. everything is good. But the... In a way, I don't think if I'm if I'm Canada, I would want to let people I wouldn't want to run that commercial because what if you're not worried about it and you see that commercial and go, wow, people are worried about yeah. that. Maybe I should be, too. And uh, I do think people should be because it, the banks are everywhere closing branches. They're downsizing. You see it when you go in there anytime here in the States, at least that you have to stand in a long line because they've just got one or two tellers now. So I, I would be concerned. But for the original question, I would try to find a company that um, that does what we do in Canada. OK, uh, Francis is asking, can you please provide a list or mention several non-reportable silver? So I put this up so Andrew can go over it again. Oh, yeah. So it's the 90 percent silver that we just talked about. Also, the old silver dollars, they have like these Morgan dollars, peace dollars and um if you have, if you've ever been given any coins from anybody in your family, you know, that have just been passed on from generation to generation, you likely have some of those silver coins, the old silver dollars. Those are excellent. Um, 
there are some that have collector value and having collector value makes them a non-Boolean item and makes them non-reportable. So whereas a silver eagle, just a regular silver eagle is a, a reportable asset, they make a proof version, which is a more expensive, fancier version with a, a much nicer finish. It costs a lot more than an ounce, but you don't lose that value when you buy it. They can still go up in value for their collector value and for the movement in the silver spot price. So okay. um, those are a couple of them. And on our website, we have a few more. Okay, here, I'm going to put it. Here's his uh, website, bh-pm.com. We have the phone number up there as well. Uh, Julie is asking, uh, Julie Klingerman, so I bought so many shares of gold with my 401k. Is that going to go up? Yes, those are for sure. Those are for sure yeah. going up. So if you if you invested in like GLD, which is uh, an exchange traded fund that moves with the price of gold, then yes. Um, I think for a trader that's trying to make a quick buck, that's really good. It yeah. worked out for you in a, as a long term hold. But I think yeah. that um, I would get out of that stuff because they're oversold. And what I mean by that is that if every person that has shares of GLD wanted to share, wanted to sell on the same day, you wouldn't be able to do it because more shares of it are sold than actually exist when it, when you refer to the amount of gold that backs those shares. Yeah. So somehow they're able to sell like, like, a, like 10 times as many ounces as what they really have. Okay. Uh, Carol Hostler, if you take money out to, uh, out, do you leave enough to pay your bills? I, I, I would always recommend that. I would mm -hmm. recommend that you have that you have a, a fair sized um, emergency fund. And um, really, if if you ask that question, I think you'd probably be better having the cash at home because my my worry is isn't so much that, that the dollar is going to be worth nothing. I worry about the banks. If there's a run on the banks and uh, you don't have a key to the front door, so you can't get into your safe deposit box. You can't get into your account. If, if you're working with them, um, if you're on a limited income and don't have a lot put away for retirement, then I might want to have a big chunk of that um, at home where I can get to it and forget about gold and silver. Just um, just have it where you, you and your family can get to it. OK, Ray King for Andrew, I have purchased from you twice now and also traded with you. Is there still a minimum of two thousand if I want to buy gold? Yes, um, it still is with the gold, but 29 an ounce. We have fractional gold that you would be able to get mm -hmm. some of, but we still would be at the 2000. Okay. Um, Fell Bell is asking, so buy gold rather than the cash stashed. I think you have to do a little bit of both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? 100% behind that. Yeah. Oh, this is an interesting comment. Um, from uh, Facebook, I know he has a minimum of 2000 but he has mentioned going in with family or others to reach that minimum, if possible. That's a good idea, Andrew. Family yeah. members you trust. Let's just make that clear. Yes, it, it's worked out really great. What I usually recommend is that you appoint one person to handle the transaction on mm -hmm. your end, and, um, and they collect the funds from everyone, and then they disperse the metals from everyone. But it's mm -hmm. people have been doing it. You've mentioned... Um, I'm giving gold and silver as holiday gifts and that family. That's a good idea. You could give this as a, yep. As a gift to people, college, college graduations, high school graduations. If you want to get your kids or your nieces or your nephew started in it. We'll just, it's true. It's, uh, okay. I worked in a coin shop from the time I, Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I worked in a coin shop from the time I was 15 to about 23, working in my first job for another person. And um, for my birthday and every holiday, he would always give me coins and sports related items. And all the gifts that I received when I was younger, I don't have those. But the gold and, and the silver and the sports related items, I have every one of them. So people hang on to them. Okay. From Rumble, KAK29. Uh, what if your spouse is a 401k, 401k but won't make the call? Do they have to do it or can I? Um, they do have to do it. But what we've, okay. we've had, we've had a lot of people where the, the husband and the wife both have retirement accounts. 
and um, and they're at odds about whether or not they should both do it. And, and one ends up doing it for them and the other one just waits. And then eventually the other one ends up rolling it over. I think most of the time they want to make sure that um, they're going to have a way to be able to see that the gold and silver are in their account, which you do, because you'll yeah. have an online portal with, mm -hmm. um, it's called My Equity with Equity Trust Company, where you can see whether or not the metals are in there or not. And once, once you see that uh, we followed through on our part of the transaction, then people will start to feel more comfortable. Also, now that you have some skin in the game, so to speak, when you start to see that gold has reached an all-time high, you get excited. Like today, we've had a flurry of activity. It's like, I'm it's sure. a lot. And, yeah. and we've been telling people this was coming. And you and I texted about it um, last mm -hmm. week. Yes, I knew for sure it was going to happen, and um, and just didn't know when. And then finally, when we talked late last week, I said, "Look, this is going to probably happen next week," and mm -hmm. and it actually happened on Sunday evening. Okay, this is Leslie Ten. Who controls the price of silver and gold? Bank, stock market? Who who controls it, Andrew? And that's a super loaded question, but I'll tell it you, is, that, um, it is yeah. a loaded question, but it's a good <laughs> one. It's one of the best. It um. So the gold and silver have a price based on futures contracts. So right now you could trade um, the January 2024 contract and they go they go out like every month, more specifically, like every three months. So the further the contracts are out are for the futures market, the higher the price of gold could be. So I saw that if you're trading, say, the March gold, it showed that the spot price for gold last week was like $2,090 an ounce. So one of my um, reps came up to me and said, hey, it says here that gold's at 2,090. Is that a new high? I go, no, that's the futures price. I go, you need to find the contract that's closest to where it's at now. So to answer that question, um, people that are futures traders that trade the paper gold and silver, they're, um, they're placing bets, so to speak, that gold will go up or bets that it will go down. So the big banks, oftentimes are betting that gold will go down even though they own a whole lot of gold because they do need to keep it in place like we talked about earlier they need to keep gold from becoming the most exciting investment out there because if it is then all the dollars are going to come out of the centralized banking system it's, it's going to be bad for the banks and yeah it's going to expose exactly how weak the banks are and mm -hmm. uh, it will be bad for the economy it will create hyperinflation because no one will want the dollar Yes, and, uh, that's it'll, true. But, so it's um they've been manipulating gold for a really long time. The big banks have. Okay, Stacy George on Rumble is asking, can I move my gold and silver from one depository to another? Maybe you should call Andrew Stacy about the depository they use. Yeah, yeah, she should call. Um, what what a lot of people have been doing recently is um they they already are signed up at a different depository. They can depending on how, how much stuff they have there, they can have it shipped from that depository directly to the depository that we use. But oftentimes, especially if it's a lot of silver, that can be very costly. So you may want to consider mm -hmm. selling us everything that you have in one depository, and then we'll sell you a um, similar product to go into another depository. And um, a lot of the time that could be a better deal for you as far as the costs. All right. This is a good question, Andrew. One troy ounce of silver, uh, silver eagle, reportable? Question mark. Those are reportable assets. Mm -hmm. It's the, that's the most tracked uh, item that I could think about for silver and probably for gold as well, because um, the both the gold eagle and the silver eagle, those are the number one most popular items. They're the ones that most people that haven't really tried to educate themselves will go into. And I don't blame you because they're so beautiful, but. And um, once you've been doing it for a little while, yeah. then uh, it makes sense to look at some of the non-reportable items. Tim Crane is asking, what uh, does he think will happen to the crypto coins? I you think know ultimate, more about this than me, Andrew. Oh, yeah. it's um, I've done mm -hmm. crypto now for like six years off and on. And like Amanda said earlier, it is a super, super high risk. It really has to be your risk capital. And I do mean yeah. risk. So um. I do think that very uh, high risk that we will pay for things using our phones that that paper currency will completely be eliminated and and when we say that the dollar is in trouble it's not just the dollar it's um it's all the fiat currencies for every country even mm -hmm. the yuan or russia because yeah we're not going to need to touch dirty dollar bills and dirty coins every single day for much longer 
it's going to it's going to uh, change to some sort of um, central bank digital currency, possibly even a universal world currency, and um, and that will be paying for things the same way we do with Apple Pay or Venmo or PayPal. Yeah. And um, and for me, I, maybe I'm a little bit old fashioned, but I I just want to be able to own assets that are outside of the centralized banking system and my parents and their parents did it by taking hundred dollar bills and putting them under the mattress or in the sock drawer and just putting away something that you I can remember. get to easily for a rainy day yeah but now i i want to have gold more than i want to have the dollars this is a comment, Andrew, from one of your clients. So Eunice Gonzalez, she said, oh, she's watching from Puerto Rico. I bought junk silver from Beverly Hills Precious Metals, and it was effortless. Yes. Oh, thank you so much, Eunice. I do mm -hmm. remember the transaction. I think what made it work for her was that she had access to, uh, to an address here in the United States. So she exactly. was able to send an international wire transfer, and we were able to deliver it to um, a place where she feels comfortable having it stored at here in the United States. And I'm really grateful for that. And, and I do share with my salespeople all the time that we can help other people. You just have to be willing to take a couple of extra steps and ask them a couple of extra questions on how they might be able to, to do this. But it always has to ship in the United States. Okay. Susan, so keeping your cash at home instead of banks. Well, I think, you, you know, what do you, what do you say, Andrew, to this? Well, I think if you've got like $10,000 in your checking account, and let's say that that's um, really all that you're working with in there, and let's say that you um, you have monthly expenses of a couple thousand dollars and you have, um, and you have a, a, a maybe retirement coming in every single month, well, I would take at least half of what you have in there and just, just um, take it at home. Take it home yeah. and just uh, and have it sit there because what, what, what happens if, um, if your bank is the next bank that fails? And, and, and you say, well, I'm just going to go to the bank then first thing tomorrow morning and, uh, and withdraw my money. And then you get there and there's 150 other people out there that had the same idea. And, and I remember in 2010, 2011, some of this happened and you're standing in a long line, line True. waiting to withdraw. Yeah. And then the bank just um, turns the sign and says, we're closed. We ran out of cash so we can help you with any other transaction. But if you're looking for cash, come back tomorrow. And um, that's a bank run. And uh, you want to protect yourself from that. Exactly. Kimberly Moss is saying, is there back orders on receiving gold and silver right now? So if she calls you, Andrew. There's not. And, and it's surprising okay, because, because last year, around, say, mid to late November, gold and silver were, were very, very cheap. But everybody was out there bargain hunting and um, almost everything was running behind like two, three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's just normal. Yeah. And um, if you overpay, you can always get things that are very, very quickly. But if you want to get a good deal from a reputable dealer, there, there would be a delay. Well, nowadays, if, um, if you wanted to make a gold purchase, it doesn't matter if it's $10,000 or a yeah. million dollars. They're going to ship within about two days. So there's Oh, there's that's no fast. Backlog. Okay, yeah. well, that's good to know. Good to know. Donna is asking, what is a person supposed to do with these gold and silver coins? So when they get them, Andrew, what do they do with them? That's, um, I, I believe Donna is a, a client of ours. And thank you as well for your support along with everybody else. Um, thank you, I Donna. Always tell people, I go, look, when the, when, when the delivery comes, open up the box. Like, open it as, as quickly as you can. Look at it. You'll ooh and ah at it a little bit. You'll reminisce about um, coins that you might have seen when you were younger. Then after you're done doing that, just tape it up, put it somewhere safe and forget about it. And then one day you're going to see that gold and silver have reached an all time high. And that's when you're going to pull them out again and look at them. Um, just know that if you've been dealing with us for some time and you've done like multiple transactions, more than likely we understand what your goal for owning yeah. the gold and silver is. Mm -hmm. And if you've gone heavy on the gold, we already know that, uh, that if gold went to say $2,500 an ounce, and silver trailed up, we might call you and say, hey, let's uh, exchange some of your gold in favor of silver. Yeah. And uh, we'll help try to manage what, what, your, what your investment is and try to give you your best bang for your buck. Up oh, there's Diana Fleming. I always remember her dog. That dog's face is so hysterical. <laughs> He's so adorable. She said, what are your thoughts on copper, please, Andrew? Some of us are not, quote, minted enough to be able to afford silver or gold. What do you think about copper? 
I think copper is excellent. So, so mm -hmm. right now, it being almost 2024, you know, the year yeah. 2024, we're almost exactly where we were in re regards to copper, where we were with silver in the late 60s. So right now they're calling the copper junk copper. So for people out there, any um, any pennies that you have that are before 1982, mm -hmm. those are copper. They're actually okay. worth. So what each penny is worth one cent, but it has more than one cent's worth of copper in it. So it's actually something that you probably should put aside if you can, especially if we're going to central bank digital currency and you're not going to have any of that stuff anymore. But the problem is, is that because copper is not that valuable, it would cost you more than a penny to extract that yeah. more than a penny worth of copper out of the coin itself. Mm -hmm. But it won't be that way for much longer. It was like that with, okay. um, with junk silver in the late 60s. So I think copper is great. And just one more thing, um, Amanda, that you have that Ben Franklin half dollar that's, uh, that's in your hand. 10% of that is copper. And, and the 10% of mm -hmm. copper, you're not paying anything for it. So when you buy the 90% silver. That's a good point. You're actually getting, when you buy the 90% silver, you're getting an addition of copper in it that actually yeah. is quite valuable. So you're kind of getting a two for one deal with these exactly. guys right here. Okay. Exactly. And and right now, point, it's, right now, it's not nearly as exciting as it can be in the future. Uh, Super Granny 67, she's watching on Rumble. She says, I have a 401k, but company says it has to stay there even if I get fired until retirement. Knowing what I know now, BlackRock is who owns our company's uh, 401. What can I do? What well, can she do, Andrew? Well, she is stuck because um, if, if, the, um, if her company won't cooperate in letting her take even a portion of it to invest in yeah. gold and silver or anything else, it, it ultimately, she shares that retirement with them until she's retired. But the part that they said that's not true is it, if she retires or just leaves the company, she's free to do whatever she wants with it. It's just. Um, oh, that's yeah. excellent. So she yeah. leaves. She could take what's what was in the 401k and do what she wants with it. Exactly. So so when okay. people go and fill out the online form on our website, I, I read mm -hmm. every single one of them. And I'm the one that gives those to the different people on my team and I try to match up whatever the need is that they put on the note section of that form with the person that might be able to help them. Yep, the rest. There, so, there it is. Uh, help them the best. So what I'll, yeah. So what I end up doing is in that note section, I, I would say at least once a week, I see people that say, Hey, I've, I've talked with your company a couple of times and, uh, and uh, I no longer work for the company I worked at and now I'm free to do whatever I want with my 401k. Could you please have the, person I talked to last time, give me a call. Or they'll say, um, at the first of the year, I'll be retired and uh, and I'm free to do whatever I want with my 401k. And you can roll it over into a precious metals IRA. And you can still, as you're retired, take distributions out of it every single year, or if you have an emergency, and we make it a pretty seamless uh, process. Wonderful. Roger Hobson is saying, hello, Andrew, I'm rolling my 401k into the precious. Oh, Congrats on that because it's, um, I'd rather have gold and silver now than anything else that you could have in there. And there probably will be a time about three, four years from now when the stock market's going to be riding high again. And it might be more advantageous to you to be in stocks, but that's down the road here. Okay. He had it. He actually, he wrote it again because he forgot to put the second part on. He said, what would you recommend the split between gold and silver be? So maybe he should call you for that. Oh yeah, I, he should. But I'll just tell you that like, if mm -hmm. somebody is almost retired, um, they might have a different strategy than somebody that might be say in their forties or, or fifties and um, retirement is on the horizon, but still quite a few years off that they could be more aggressive and, and maybe have more silver. Mm -hmm. but, um, I think that as you approach retirement, you might want to have more gold. Okay. Um, God is love. So this will be like our last, our last uh, question. What are the non-reportable assets? So we'll go, Andrew, so many people are asking this mm -hmm. in the chat right now. They want to know this for themselves. So for, for gold, any of the pre-1933 gold, like um, $20 mm -hmm. gold pieces, $10 gold pieces, $5 gold pieces. Yeah. Um, you probably have some that maybe have been passed uh, to you or your family through grandparents or, or your parents, but those, um, um, those are non-reportable assets. Anything that used to 
uh, that used to be a coin that you could go out and buy things with. And uh, so for both gold and silver, if it's mm -hmm. a collectible coin, those are non-reportable assets. If it's a beautiful bar of silver or a bar of gold or a silver eagle or a gold eagle, and it says like one ounce in it or one half yeah. ounce, those are reportable assets. So um, if it, I know it can be a little bit confusing. There was one night and it actually was uh, was an Ark of Grace um, listener that, um, that I texted with her until about nine o'clock at night because she went on all these different websites on the internet and, um, and many of them have one page dedicated to what is reportable and what is non-reportable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she found conflicting stuff on, on all these different websites. And she said, wow, I'm so confused. And she's, so I, I just stuck to my guns and just told her what I'm telling you is what it's always been. And I sent her something that, uh, that kind of broke it down for her, but she was hung up on looking at uh, the descriptions on all these different websites. But I think what you have to do is just look at everything and then just kind of come to your own conclusion. But I'll just mm -hmm. tell you that the reason why the bullion is reportable or, or how the law got passed as part of the Patriot Act was to keep money from moving around. This, this, this happened after 9-11 yeah. because, uh, because these, um, the, the terrorists that were operating, the cells that were operating here in the United States, United States needed ways to be able to move money around. And one of the ways they could do it is with gold. And, um, and the United States wanted to eliminate how people can have illicit uh, um, actions or businesses and move okay. money around. But at the same time, they take away our privacy. Exactly. Now, this, this is non-reportable. So this non one is non-reportable, just so all of you know. These are the, this is a silver uh, half dollar. So this yes. is a half dollar. This is, I'll tell you the date on it, 1948, which is the year Israel became a nation. So of all the coins I could have <laughs> found, this is a 1948, which is the year Israel became a nation. So isn't it interesting? We're talking about what's going on in Israel now and how it's affecting the price of gold and silver. And this happens to be in 1948. Well, wow. and the so reason why that one's probably so worn is because yeah. that was the first year that they made the Franklin half. Yes. And um, it was the first year. So it's um, okay. um, that one's probably worth a lot more than the other ones that, that are in the silver that that came in. But um, we're not usually selling one coin here and one coin there. So exactly. We yeah, you're selling them in bulk. I, I yeah. hear you. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. We got a lot of questions answered here. Oh, yes. We did, we did a, a good shotgun round there. That's very we, nice. Yes. Good shotgun round. Yep. They ask great questions, our viewers. They love to ask questions. And what's nice is Andrew will answer your questions, even if it has to do with other aspects of the market. So that's very nice of him to do, to come on and do for all of us. And we very much appreciate that. And, and I love doing it. So it's people oftentimes um, feel like they're bothering us when they reach out, if, if they're asking very, very, very simple questions. But they're really not that simple. There's people don't have any way to find out. There's so much conflicting information out there. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the way that I've been operating this business for many, many years. And, uh, we, and people should reach out and my associates okay. all are like-minded and they can, they do a wonderful job. So I'll, we'll, we'll close with this. This is from Annette. Should I keep my old coins or cash in? If so, where? So if she has old silver coins, she could, she cash them in with you guys. Oh, she could. Um, okay. I would keep them. If, okay. if I was you, if you've had them for a long time, but you can, um, you should keep them, put them in a, if you have like a gun safe, or if you have, um, if you have uh, somewhere that you hide things that are more valuable to you, mm -hmm. then uh, I would do that. And you'll be glad that you did because one day silver will be allowed to, to run. Maybe it'll break a hundred dollars an ounce one day. One day. Well, we'll see. We'll see going into 2024 what happens. But gold hitting an all-time high is, uh, a, I think, an amazing um, a, a indicator of uh, what's coming in 2024. So, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, people can go to bh-pm.com to get started with Andrew and his team. You can also call the one eight six six number that we have listed below. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for having me. I hope to be back soon. Hey, uh, Andrew will be back on in about two weeks. We'll, we'll, Andrew will come right back on. So make sure to get your questions ready uh, because that uh, that is when 
Uh, normally, Andrew is able to come on. So in about two weeks or so, we'll have Andrew back on. Thank you so much for joining us today. The reason we do these also is because Andrew gives out this advice for free, meaning he comes on and he answers your questions, right? Uh, no matter what, where people get nervous about calling places sometimes because they think they're going to try to sell them something when they have questions. That takes that away and eliminates this by all of you coming on and asking your questions to Andrew when he comes on. And he loves answering your questions. He also tells me that our viewers actually ask some of the best questions that he gets. So kudos to you guys. Also, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to use wisdom. We're supposed to be good stewards with what God gives us. We're supposed supposed to gain understanding. You know, if we look back scripturally, Abraham, David, Solomon, I could go on, all had precious metals, all had gold and silver, all kept it. Love the Lord, right? Uh, uh, David was called a man after God's own heart, even though he was an incredibly flawed man. They kept these things um, in, in order to do things for the kingdom in order uh, to keep things in times of maybe scarcity where they had to use as tender, but they kept, they use wisdom and they kept it. In fact, it mentions that Abraham scripturally had quite a bit of it. Uh, so this is why we do this too, because we need to be able to gain wisdom and understanding in stewarding what God has given us and where we should take what God has given us and what we should do with it. So this is why we kind of do all of this as well. I'm actually um, considering also, I'm praying about it, bringing on um, a, you know, a financial advisor that's a believer that does biblically based financial advising um, to help all of us out there as well, just so you guys can ask questions and, and get your questions answered and gain wisdom and understanding. So uh, that's it, guys. We're, we're going to wrap up for today, but we are going to be back on, I believe, tomorrow. So we will announce there is lots to talk about. So I'm looking very forward to tomorrow uh, and coming back on with all of you. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. God bless everyone. Keep the faith. Armor up according to Ephesians chapter 6, Psalm 91. I recommend you say it every single day. It takes two or three minutes. Um, we, we, we bless Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We continue to stand with them. Uh, and we just encourage you to stay anchored and grounded in the word and pursuing that relationship with the Lord. Seek him in all things because he says you have not because you ask not. Seek him in all things ask, uh, ask of the Lord and he will answer you. He says, call on me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, which you know not have a wonderful rest of your evening, everyone. We love you. Hello everyone. Amanda Grace here. So as many of you know, Dr. Mark Sherwood and Dr. Michelle Sherwood of the Functional Medical Institute are mine and Chris's doctors. And so I went to Dr. Sherwood with a problem that I was seeing, not only with, with what I was going through, but with what other women were going through concerning their metabolism, concerning energy, concerning their hormones. And so we put our heads together and we are very happy now to finally be able to present to you Rafa for women. Rafa means healer in Hebrew. So it is an ode to the Lord because he is our healer. He put things in the earth that help heal us. And so Rafa is a product that was created for that. It also helps by helping with a healthy metabolism and natural hormones, as well as it helps balance fatigue. It helps with weight gain, night sweats, mood swings, blood sugar issues, and more. It is all natural. And I find more and more people are going into the natural arena in order to find solutions to issues that they're going through. So if you'd like to learn more, you can go to www.arcofgrace.org forward slash ministry dash partners to learn more about Rafa today. God bless. Hey everyone, Amanda Grace here. 
If you are looking for advice on financial matters, if you think gold and silver might be right for you, go to bh-pm.com today. Andrew Sorcini of Beverly Hills Precious Metals, who has been on Ark of Grace many times and loves to answer our viewer questions, is here with his team to answer all of your gold and silver needs. Whether you want to buy gold and silver, whether you have questions to see if it's right for you, whether you are looking to roll over retirement accounts, go to bh-pm.com today and Andrew and his team will be more than happy to assist you with all of your needs. If you want to support an amazing patriot and be a blessing, go to MyPillow.com today and use promo code ARK, A-R-K, to save up to 66% or more off of all MyPillow products. They have pillows, of course, but they are so much more than pillows. They have sheets. They have slippers. They have bathrobes. They even have dog beds. And a fun fact for all of you, Noble, one of our pigs at our animal sanctuary, has indeed slept on a MyPillow dog bed. So if you want to be a blessing, you can go to MyPillow.com today and use promo code ARC. It is an alternative to big pharma based on quantum physics, over 40 scripture verses written into these patches for everything from blood sugar, anxiety, pain, neuropathy, to immune system boost, dog pain. They are very sincere about um, having alternatives to big pharma. We are a big advocate of natural solutions to help with pain and, and, and blood sugar and a host of other issues. I yeah. tried the pain patches and, yes, and they worked when I used them. When you connect it to your body, the skin patch changes changes your brainwaves. Sugar, this one is neuropathy. I actually have it on. And we use this on Toby, actually, because Toby's about eight years old. And from being paralyzed years ago and the Lord miraculously healing him, he has a little leftover with his joints and his hips. So we actually give him the doggy pain patches. What was he doing? He was running? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I walked him out. And wow, he's boom. And he got power. I said, no way. And I don't know. I said, Amanda, what? What did you do to him? To <laughs> <laughs> so it's good.